Word on the street, I'm a suspect. Hanging with the killers in the projects. Tell the water bell, keep quiet. Catch a nigga slipping from behind. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome back. Feel like I just saw y'all yesterday. Hello, not me coming through with content, trying to go live with y'all twice in a week. I'm doing so good. <laughs> How is everybody doing? I am hoping that all of you guys came over from that Black Dynamite Live. That was so much fun. I love when you guys get in there and we get, you know, a good group of people in there to engage. I had a really good time in that live. I was over here cackling, cracking up. But welcome. Be sure to hit that like button if you haven't already. And thank you guys so much for being here. Not only are we going to jump into a little bit more of that Black Dynamite energy, but I have a guest backstage. You know, I always got some good people here. <laughs> somebody you probably don't know but we'll probably want to get to know them once we get on up in it you know what i'm saying gotta ask them questions i feel like kind of like oprah you know what i mean <laughs> i ain't giving out no cars though <laughs> but let me see what you guys are saying in the chat before we get started how y'all feel about my, my cream corn intro y'all know i'll be working hard on my intro it'd be a whole separate day of editing just for the intro and for me to pull something together from that so i'm hoping that y'all enjoyed that i had to give y'all cream corn type of energy <laughs> let's see a blastic it is definitely a blastic thank you so much for being here rbg gaming hello hello thank you so much for being here if anybody enjoyed that whole black dynamite situation netta paid for it nita came up and she paid for it spent her hard on 50 dollars on it and i appreciate her to no end i am so glad i love when you guys pay for stuff and you are there to attend the live to see the video firsthand when it drops i appreciate you so much for being there for that and thank you so much for purchasing black dynamite i had a good time welcome back y'all i don't know why every time i see welcome back first thing that comes to my mind is baby kids and i just go welcome back weenie <laughs> Welcome back, y'all. Thank you so much for being here, Bree. Let's see. Hey, friend. Hey, Shani. Thank you so much for being here, girl. Let's see. Locked, indentured, and black. <laughs> hey, beautiful Tyra. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for the compliment. You know I do what I can. Cracker, cracker, white cracker, cracker ass cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Tara from her bed in her antebellum review. You cannot be pulling up TG with antebellum. You know how long ago that was like in the beginning stages of my channel. I don't remember saying cracker, cracker, white, cracker, cracker ass, cracker. If I say it was probably me, I, I probably said it. <laughs> Hello, Tony T. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> nice 90 shirt. Yeah, you know, I got to put put the year I came out the womb on the shirt. Thank you so much. Proud of you. Proud of you too, friend. Thank you so much. Let's see. Nikki's here. That intro was bomb. I was dead. See, all the more reason for you to roll up and get into a little bit more black exploitation and check out Black Dynamite. I feel like you would actually like it, even though you don't really mess with comedies like that see love the intro thank you i see i love the cream corn intro thank you so much thank you it, it, you know it, it was for everybody but it was for you because you know <laughs> I see the intro was fire. So was the whole review. Thank you so much, Bree. I cannot wait to get into them temptations because I feel like we're going to be 
we're going to be on cloud nine for like a whole hour talking about blue Otis and David and Paul and the whole crew. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to go ahead and get started. Y'all. I love black dynamite. I see definitely a black buster. I see, look at Tyra with the Patra queen of dance hall braids. Y'all know I stay on a romantic hall every other day. All, always here for that. But you guys, I think it is about time for us to bring the guests out so we can get to know people, so we can talk. I'm excited. I feel, you know, really Sally, Jesse, Raphael. I got my glasses on and everything. Welcome to the stage. Dollar Bill, Dollar Bill. <laughs> Dollar Will is in the house. Thank you so much for being here, Dollar Will. How are you doing today? Oh, I am doing great. It is such an honor to be a part of your <laughs> channel. Trust me. Don't Trust don't me. be don't be acting new now. Like, you know, <laughs> he has had me on his you know podcast situation several times now, and it's you know <laughs> it's an honor now to finally return the favor because you know it took me up a, a little bit more courage to go live. Everybody don't have that good podcast energy like you do, but thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Like, won't you tell the people a little bit about yourself and what you do on your your channel and your podcast? Okay, well, my name is Dollar Will, but my birth name is William. <laughs> I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. I'm 35 years old. I have been doing my podcast for two and a half years, and I specify mental health, depression, grief, relationships, et cetera, et cetera. And I have over 500 episodes. Yes, that's a lot of damn episodes because I got about 500 videos almost. <laughs> that, that is some work. Like, what made you want to specialize in? Because that's the difference. You know, when people come on and say, well, I got a podcast and it's all oh, I'm doing music, I'm talking about movies, I'm talking about pop culture. You're like, no, we're getting into mental health. We're getting into, you know, a whole bunch of other things over there. What made you go in that direction? Well, back in 2015, I lost my oldest brother. And 2016, I lost my grandmother. 2017, I lost my father. 2018, I lost my um, cousin. And then I lost my uh, grandmother, 2019. So I had like a huge, um, just reincurring deaths in my family. So we talk, mm -hmm. we're talking about like a total of 11 deaths. And we and both sides of the family and we we had it hard but i went through depression and ptsd and all that stuff so i just wanted to give back once i had got the counseling for it and just really help out my community because i know most of us crazy anyway so i just want <laughs> to help out and care you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I just love that you even said that you, you know, sought out help and you went and got counseling and all that other good stuff because a lot of people, they deal with stuff internally, myself included, because I won't go talk to a damn person. I, I'm no better. <laughs> But, you know, we, uh, you know, sit and let stuff fester and we don't, you know, reach out and outsource any type of counseling or assistance for what we're dealing with. So I just love that you speak on that and that you are trying to give a voice to that to just let other people know, like, you're not the only one. Like, everybody is experiencing a lot of the same things. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, how did you find me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I guess um cuz I'm a big fan of movie reviews mm -hmm. and I just popped in one of your well, I didn't really like search you up cuz I didn't know you existed yet, but I just saw <laughs> that <laughs> but I just saw that it, like your thumbnail caught my eye. Hmm. Oh, it was Tales from the Hood. It was Tales really? from the Hood. Really? Oh. Oh, yeah. that's a bad one. I need to redo that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, it's good but that's when your girl was winded i didn't really know how to edit and i was nervous as hell i had no confidence for that video to translate the way i wanted it to but the fact that it caught you enough for you to stick around i appreciate that <laughs> oh, oh no problem it was just the way that you had just performed it and because that's my that was my brother's favorite movie so mm -hmm. I, so that really like Touch me that I have found it that particular night when mm -hmm. I was messing him and just oh. enjoyed your energy and stuff like that. So that's what made me subscribe and 
just become part of the fan club. Yeah, that's one of the uh, one of the things I didn't expect with my videos because I don't see anything I have to say as you know healing anybody or helping anybody. But I see so many messages from people who tell me I uplifted them in some way, or I was having this type of week, this type of day, or this is happening, and your video made me feel so much better. So thank you. I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's uh, that's really awesome to do. But what uh, what has been going on with your podcast? Who have you been talking to? Oh man, I've been talking to just so many people because I get so many messages and stuff. And because at first, I would say the first episode I did, it was more like a row session because mm -hmm. people never saw me talk before because I was pretty shy, pretty quiet. So I really had stepped out my comfort zone a whole bunch to just take a leap of faith and to do this because it was just in my heart. So yeah. sometimes you got to turn your brain off and follow your heart because it's really important. But I have been talking to, um, well, I had just finished talking to, um, I was, man, I really forgot. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've done so many, but I had just finished having like a heartfelt interview with this barber here um, by the name of Dada Cuts. And we was just talking about family and he didn't really know how to handle that type of thing. And I was just telling him, man, F him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no good family. They, they, yeah. they F him family. I thought he was going to like, oh, you know, love and support. Like, no, that other part of the family. Okay. We all yeah. got some of that family. <laughs> oh, of course. But, but I just have been learning just on this journey is that you can handpick your family as well. Like, it don't mm -hmm. have to be blood. And that's the miss huge misconception of it because yeah. everybody just think because oh you have dna and this and that but you didn't have a um choice in that you know what i'm saying so yeah. but you can have a choice now as an adult because the people that's uplifting that care about your well-being just to call and see if you ate or yeah. just say you know call you to, if you're okay then that's my family you know what i'm saying and yeah. i have a whole bunch of them around here that's my tribe absolutely so. i, I show sure had to make my own um who have you talked to so far that you're most proud of like oh my god i can't believe i talked to this person oh man um well mainly was billy garland jr tupac's hmm. brother yeah and stuff um keith bolshaw from the injustice files and i would say south star from the group smiles and south star but mainly uh, talking to Rashana Washington, the daughter of Raymond Washington, the founder of the Crips. Yeah. But that was, that was, man, that was some great journalism. <laughs> yeah, I watched that. I was like, look at you. I, I can see how much you've grown uh, when I can, because, you know, it'd be so hard to stay checking in and keeping up with people's content. But you have yeah. grown a whole lot. Like, I'm really proud of you and... You can tell like you were like really shy at first and then it's just like so yeah my next question is like this this is whole level of confidence that you did not have before so it's like a whole lot of growth as far as your podcast and just your platform on youtube what has been the hardest thing so far well just trying to just stay on topic as far as like because i can just be very talkative but the main thing is just staying on topic and handling the new success because i'm from a small town and when mm -hmm. you're from a small town everybody just think like you some type of savior and stuff <laughs> like that and like oh you're the one you gonna make it you go you you get to the top <laughs> i'm like no i don't want to get to the top i just want to i just got here <laughs> i just want to be comfortable you know i just but but it's just that and then just Realizing who's who, you know, who's real and who's just here for the moment, you know. Yeah. So that's just one of the bit been like the difficult, but I have been just focused and disciplined and and just really doing this because I love to do it because it's therapy, you know, it's therapeutic. Yeah. yeah. This is this is my therapy. Like I didn't know that making videos would be therapeutic. It's therapeutic and it's also a stressor at the same time, which is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. which is absolutely <laughs> terrible because I put a, I put you know my all into this and I just love what I do, but I don't feel like the reception is you know as as big as I would like it to be. But I'm like you know in due time, I'm hoping that it'll get there and I can you know stick with it. But it's just this has become therapy. I just love. Um, I become a whole character for y'all and I don't even be, I didn't get on here with intentions to do that. Nobody told me I was going to be being cream corn in a year. Like (laughs) That was not at all a part of my plan, but I love it. And I just love that you guys receive it. And cause at first, like you said, just um, being self-conscious and not really kind of being introverted. I was like, Oh my God, they're going to think I'm weird. (laughs) They're going to think I'm loud. They're going to think I'm extra. Nobody's going to like these damn videos. We're like, no, y'all crazy too. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) but lastly like where do you hope to see yourself let's see in the next five years with your podcast hoping that you know you're you're still in your groove with it and it's successful what what is your main goal with it well just mainly um going global because i'm think big so you got to do it big when you're Mm -hmm. thinking big so i want to be global i want to just at least have my platform touch all seven continents and just being able to talk to the youth with juvenile centers and yeah. elementary schools and just really be like a voice advocate for people yeah. who feel like that they don't have any, a purpose and and it's cool to be smart and it's cool to be a, a geek because I'm a geek and mm-hmm. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> But 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 the but in retrospect, just to be able to um just show someone who never felt like they were amount to nothing that I could be something and I feel like I had accomplished my mission at that point. That's gorgeous. Like, don't don't make me emotional. We we come here. <laughs> I will to be emotional. You trying to make beautiful statements and stuff. Let, let me read some of these comments. People in here showing you love and showing you support, trying to make me sad. I'm like, will <laughs> trying to make me cry. Um, <laughs> welcome, will. I see five hundred. Damn. Yes, that is a whole lot of work. Tg, stay up and stay blessed, Dollar Will. Let's see, you have my condolences. Really good, good stuff. Let's see, I lost my big brother in 2015. Oh, Nikki, I didn't know that. It it literally devastated my world. I can't imagine losing that many people back to back. Much love to you, brother. Absolutely. Hold on, y'all. Yes, son. (laughs) You have whatever snack in there. You have a father in there. Close my door. No, 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 hey. (laughs) What I tell you, this is this is this is my moment. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I always trying to be all in the videos, all on the record. Get 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 out. You have a daddy in there. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> your family. Oh. I've been dealing with deaths in my family for a couple of couple of years. Oh man, I'm I'm so sad to hear. Like that's that's a lot of loss, and you are a champ seriously for even dealing with that and i'm just glad to uh see you use that and flip it into something positive and want to be influential to other people who might be going through the same thing uh laundry said chicken and waffles uh, absolutely chicken and waffles <laughs> making videos can be fun but stressful because of the reaction of people's opinions about it oh that's the last thing i care about tg y'all can read me for filth in them comments all day Show, just talk talk your trash like a comment is a comment Facts. <laughs> let's see Facts. hey young man let's see uh not the baby saying hey yeah he, he ain't no cute don't don't put that he might come back well, let's get to what we need to get <laughs> you have a daddy in there absolutely you know, trying to act like you the, you the one parent you have a father i've been working hard to make sure you had a father and you gonna come to me all the time leave me alone Right, let's move on. <laughs> let's get into what we came here for. Yes. This good old black dynamite. Like, I didn't think I would have this much fun with this movie. But getting into our intro here, most of the time I have here, what comes to mind? Like, what's the first line of dialogue that comes to mind when you see this movie poster or hear about this movie? But I have shit here already. Who the hell is interrupting my kung fu? <laughs> Green corn. No. <laughs> my favorite. Black dynamite. 
you came to see me, baby? Like, oh, bitch, hell no. I got to come wrap this. I'll give you some later, you know, since everybody's in here desperate. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you even think about Black Dynamite? Oh, man. It's it's funny <laughs> because I saw the cartoon before I saw the movie. Really? Oh. Yes. So I didn't, <laughs> so I didn't know that this is that the it was a movie to this because mm-hmm. it was it was funny because um the car i think the cartoon came out like 2011 2012 one of those years but mm-hmm. it was just like so different it was so unique and i was like what the hell is this so the first the sort of like the first episode to it um with richard pryor who played by um eddie griffin mm-hmm. like he did richard pryor so great the first episode <laughs> i was so hooked after that but Yes, this this is a classic. I if you want to laugh, like like this is a classic. I love it. I love this movie. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I don't know. I think I got the humor more because I, I watched this at the time. You know, of course, I was nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> I was into it and laughing, but just, uh, you know, with age comes wisdom. And I was just cracking up, just catching every single, like with my with my cat eye, with my reviewer eye, catching every single little line of dialogue that was funny. And it was, it was goddamn entertaining. I love every single ounce of minute that I spent with this movie. And, you know, when you're younger, you don't really... Um, just pay attention to so much but Mm -hmm. i think at the time i didn't even realize this was a parody (laughs) (laughs) i just you know i just found it to be funny so as i said at the top there don't leave no titties around me because you know you leave some titties (laughs) around like that might it's over you just asking for it if you come in here with your titties okay don't come in here with those (laughs) but there is like so much especially with the love that i have for black exploitation now there is a little bit of willie dynamite dolomite shaft mac and so many others and i feel like this movie did such a good job watching it now it really reminded me so much of i'm gonna get you sucker as far as the level of execution that they had with the movie movie on such a small budget like how do you feel like they did with uh all the influences and incorporating a little bit of everything of the 70s exploitation era into this one hour and a half film (laughs) well i think that michael john white watched a lot of tv so (laughs) he had a down pack then and it was just unique because it's really impossible to combine classics without ruining it the whole um ingredient so i think they did a great job just with the script and just with the comedy of course but also with the consciousness that mm-hmm. was in it because even though they made a joke out of it it's it's still the truth but it's funny it's just how the the way you think about it you know what i'm saying but it, they did a great job yeah, we all know it's some truth. You white is stay trying to, you know, put poison <laughs> in our community and we're tired of it, okay? <laughs> facts, facts. Put the smack in the anaconda malt liquor and all these other things to delude us. Stop doing that. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I feel like they did, you know, a really good job. I know a lot of you, Nikki, <laughs> have not watched any black exploitation, but. Uh, Dynamite is very much so a Shaft, Willie Dynamite type of character, a little bit of the Mac. And then you get into characters like uh, Bullhorn, who is very much so uh, Dolomite. They really pay yes. like, really thick hum- homage to everybody in the, the era that she really loved. And it's just a really eclectic mix of everybody. And I, th- I, th- I think they did so well. Like, I was like, I didn't remember the execution being this good. Like, not even just for a parody, it's just a good movie overall. But they wrote this. <laughs> they <laughs> wrote this. A lot of the um, the idea for the movie came from from Michael Jai White because he had like a 70s theme party and he was like really getting into character. So like, you know, this could possibly be something. And then you mix that with the likes of um, Brian Mines here, a.k.a. Bobby Deuce. Who the deuce, motherfucker? Act, act like, you know, <laughs> act like y'all seen <laughs> South Central. They had to uh, write these roles for themselves. Like, I would have never known that Michael J. White was funny, that he was a capable writer, or the likes of Brian Mines, who, as I stated, I only, you know, really low-key remember him from something like South Central. A lot of these guys either don't really get cast as much, or they get cast in stereotypical roles, so you never really see their range. I never knew Mm -hmm. Michael J. White was funny up until this film, but how do you feel about 
just kind of black men doing it for themselves. And it's just like, you know what? We're going to write roles for ourselves. You're not going to give us any. We're going to write one. <laughs> I think more should do the same thing. Take matters to their own hands because there's nothing like empowerment, especially black empowerment, of course. So it just really give you the, um, the gist of just what people like, um, you know, Melvin Vale Peoples, yeah. um, you know, badass and um, everybody else who felt like they had to make their own movie because yeah. Hollywood didn't understand it at the time. So it was just um, one of those things that um, like for this movie to happen, they have to go like that. You know, they had to take that route. So that's what yeah. makes me enjoy the movie better because they had to do it themselves and it was a hit. It is. Like and it's that. uh it's very on brand for the black exploitation era, especially early on, doing it for yourself, doing it on a low a little shoestring budget, you know, all the all the errors being left in because we only have one take. <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't know this movie bombed. I didn't know. I just always assumed that this movie was successful because it I guess went on to become a cult classic, but mm-hmm. it did really bad. Like <laughs> I was like, dang, <laughs> nobody, no one at the time um went to see this movie now it had like a little two million dollar budget but i don't even think it recouped 300k like nobody stepped out for this and i feel like it wasn't just because it was a different type of parody movie i just felt like with it coming out in 2009 that it was it was too late (laughs) it was too late like doing this era i'm i'm i miss it but i'm glad it's gone at the same time because it got really saturated with every couple of weeks damn near it was date movie 43 movie disaster movie vampire sucks like it was it was so many different parody movies that just weren't even good making a mockery of different genres and it was they were just poorly executed so then you have something like this coming out at pretty much the ass end of that decade and nobody's really uh just checking so much for parodies anymore especially for something of a lower budget but yeah Mm -hmm. would you would you uh were you surprised that this movie just was not at all successful in any way? Which, by the way, is why we never got a part two, because the deal was if this was successful, then they would do a part two. But it wasn't. Yeah, I was surprised because I don't remember seeing any trailers to it. So mm-hmm. I, I really feel like they sabotaged him because he did it by himself. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't put it past them. Yeah. Mm hmm. But I'm but I'm grateful that they went the the animation route mm-hmm. with it, which it got more audience and he made more money due to animation than the film. Which I believe is crazy. And with the and then the animation only had which I mean it only had two seasons. See, Black Dynamite was poorly advertised upon release. Yeah, definitely. You know, they didn't have a big backing or a big budget, but I just expected it to do better than it did. Like, oh my goodness. But speaking of parody movies, because this reminded me of what was good about them, do you feel like we will ever get back into a time where these type of movies can be done again and everybody's not being all sensitive and shit about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm optimistic. Mm. And it's just now just people who are very sensitive, cancel culture, whatever. Yeah. Blase, blase. But I feel like, you know, we always rebirth things. So I, I would give it five, 10 years, hopefully, if everybody quit being so uptight about things. But <sighs> but I really hope because those type of movies really do well. So it just really was like, why not his movie when everybody else movie <laughs> can make a hundred million dollars and stuff like that because y'all are so quick to advertise those things but i don't think they really be liking black leads and black people being um smart because you know in the movie when they was and the you know thinking about the plan and stuff like that and orchestrated together they do all these greek guys and mm-hmm. do all these constellations <laughs> even the old lady was a sister it wasn't even none of her business <laughs> the thing so, yeah. is, I, I love these movies like more yeah, so the top more than uh like tropic thunder is my shit. <laughs> <laughs> i love yeah. tropic thunder like 
the the whole thing of seeing videos now where people are like, you know, Robert Dada Jr. in, in blackface, this is unacceptable. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like clearly you didn't get, you know, the undertones of the movie, something like a Kung Fu Hustle. So, like, mm -hmm. I don't even think these movies could even, I think they, you know, kind of faded out, but I don't think they could be made anymore at this moment in general because the culture is just hella sensitive. And I just really miss a time where nobody gave a damn. Everybody wasn't, you know, serious. We took things for face value and we knew that even though Robert Downey Jr. said, I'm a, I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. We didn't, we didn't take <laughs> it, you know, in a, <laughs> we didn't take it in an, in an offensive way and just automatically assume that he was a racist or something. Looks like no he is uh doing what needs to be done in this damn movie and i wish that they would do it again <laughs> oh yeah me too me too i love because because we need to laugh out ourselves sometimes like yeah. it's okay you know there ain't nothing gonna happen the world ain't going in it's okay uh, <laughs> very pc culture is gonna be all kind of like even you know with black dynamite in the way as i said you know you bring them titties and here you're asking for it like somebody would be <laughs> ranting on a TikTok or something complaining about how problematic this was and the image of women Man, oh my god just let us you know just have a good time here shut up <laughs> <laughs> right I, I, I miss these times I mean, but hopefully like you said everything uh comes back around so hopefully one day these movies do decide to come back around because i watched kung fu hustle the other day and had the best time speaking of coming back around and not mm -hmm. wanting to see these these type of menses on screen i uh watched a lot of uh michael J. white interviews and prep for this live because I had never really just taken out the time to even wonder, you know, in your mind, you feel like you see somebody a lot, but then when you go and look at their filmography and their history, you're like, oh, like there really wasn't a whole lot of opportunity given to him. I maybe felt like I saw him, but I really didn't. Like the most underutilized expendable because he he was never one. They never gave him a phone call. They never hit up Michael to be an expendable. <laughs> but right. not, even, not even just that. Like, I didn't know that um, he was so well-versed in martial arts. Like, as you can see at the bottom, from, like, a very young age, he does majority, like, not even majority, like, pretty much all of his own stunts. He, mm -hmm. he can act like he, uh, he's been in the game, like, since the late 80s. So if anybody was going to get that treatment to be the next up and coming black action star, this would have been like the perfect candidate. And he just did not get those calls. Why do you think he didn't get those calls, Will? <laughs> um, I think because he didn't want to put on a dress. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you watched the same interviews I watched? Yeah, yeah, you know, you know <laughs> what I'm talking about, but I, but I think that's why because when um even in his low budget films and stuff, mm -hmm. he's like masculine, he's dominant, yeah. he, he's um straight to the point, like you ain't about to play on his top type of thing. <laughs> like because I love Undisputed too. Uh-huh. And blood and bone, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, blood and bone, a classic. But I hated Ringmaster, the Jerry Springer movie. I hated oh, that. Yeah, that's that's what they gave him though. It was either a blood and bone type situation or a Ringmaster twa. He's the sexy buff brother type situation, and they really didn't give him any in between. But mm -hmm. I was looking. I was like, I always forget about him portraying Spawn, and you would think after that type of role, the floodgates would have opened for you know what he could do. But it was just like, no, he was like, I did not get any calls. I'm a true, you know, alpha male. And at the time and even to this day, they don't want to see this type of black man on screen. And shit, they don't call me for nothing. So a lot of the roles, I, you know, I turn them down. I wait for something to come my way. or I create things for myself. But I just think it was just such a wasted opportunity for him to not be a Jean Claude Van Damme or Jason Statham type situation. He has all of the capability and then some to be that. But he was repeatedly looked over. <laughs> yes and it's amazing because he's in such a great shape like <laughs> after all these years like he's still <laughs> swole like i will not mess with him i will oh, not mess man. with him or make him mad i'll make him <laughs> comfortable as possible <laughs> yeah, I think we need some of this in the forefront. Like this, on a, not not to say that because everybody deserves for their image to be portrayed and just equally. Like I'm not trying to you know dilute anybody's rights, but just a unapologetic alpha male like men. We mm -hmm. we need we need to see some of this. <laughs> we need to yeah. see some of this like pronto. Let me let me read some of these comments. I okay. see, absolutely love this film. 
I remember Austin Powers. Like, who does it? That's good stuff. I see Tropic Thunder and Austin Powers Rock 2. Scary movie as well. Uh, let's see. RDJ looks sexy as a black man, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, watch Kung Fu Hustle with my big brother when I was younger and loved it. Yeah, those are good movies. Let's see. Uh, you can't make movies like that now. Everybody's everybody niggas are broke these days. Everybody's a bitch these days. <laughs> John Wick. I think uh, the general public would accept such a movie with a black actor, not Will Smith. Denzel Washington as the Equalizer is a good example. Yeah, it could have very much so happened. He's even said um, in interviews that he's had agents and different people say oh you would be so much more successful i could work with you if you were white like i just can't or even said that they would have people call him in to like do casting for to find like white actors that could fulfill the role that he could have played himself like y'all call me here to to help with casting and who can do stunts and stuff that i'm capable of instead of just giving me the role like just absolute disrespect let's see i like uh john wick need to need the denzel washington of it yeah i mean if they want to call michael that as will said he's still even at 55 he still looks really really great i see denzel mm -hmm. washington elevated the equalizer uh if it wasn't for him it would have just been another forgotten 80s tv show i always forget that the equalizer was a tv show never me watched too. <laughs> Never watched a single John Wick movie. Mission Impossible, all of those movies. <laughs> Invisible Man can fight off 50 guys. I, I love me a good Mission Impossible. I'm about the Jet Li type situation. <laughs> Missing out, Danny. Let's mm. see. Uh, the last John Wick movie had the actor with the Belgian Shepherd. His character should have had his own film. Yeah, it's it's just been a whole lot of missed opportunity and it's, it's just really unfortunate. Like, br bring the man outside. We, we like men. I like men. <laughs> I like the real man. But yeah, there was just no reason why. Because I got into them. Not so much anymore because they they've lost their quality. But once upon a time, like, I think by Expendables 3, I was like, I, I think Michael going to be in this one. And they, they never called him. I was like, well, damn. Y'all call 50 Cent, but y'all ain't called Michael? All right, that's fine. So or Terry Crews. <laughs> Terry Crews. Call Terry Crews. They called Terry Crews first. What? Oh, like, man, he could have been up there. He could have been Passage of 57 and, and, you know, giving us that Sylvester Stallone uh, Terminator energy because he was just around that long. But whatever. Supporting cast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running things. I'm running things. You know, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm putting a, a smack down on anybody selling drugs in the community. But Black Dynamite, <laughs> I sell drugs in the community. Like, <laughs> how did you feel about the supporting cast here? Oh man, I just think that they all legends. Like, even if you didn't recognize them, they all been everywhere. They've been somewhere. So, <laughs> especially um, Bokeem Woodbine, he is so funny. Like, because <laughs> everybody always trying to say he played the same character in every movie, but this movie, he really showed his range and stuff like that. And, and mm -hmm. I love um, the, the guy who played Tom off the Boondocks. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know his name, but. He's so funny to me. Um, but and then also Asenio Hall, like Asenio oh, Hall yeah. is a he's he's a legend. Like just the characters that he can play without you recognizing him. Like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that was him until just this watch recently. I never knew that was him. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. And and I also love um the kids. The kids really was hilarious especially that little kid that came up to him and was just like oh you, you got some smack man and like i could get these two honeys out there that we could work for it i'm like huh oh man yeah it, it was good cool. it was, i was i was just so glad that because as i said this movie was very low budget this mm -hmm. is just courtesy of Michael Jai White. And I'm sure others hear their connections just to go, hey, we're trying to make a movie. I'm trying to make it happen. Like, if you don't mind doing me a solid and, you know, portraying a role in this film. And just for everybody here, regardless of their status, to be so humble and just really low key do this film off of GP. Even if it was a brief scene, like these are, you know, commendable black actors, black talent. And it's just such a collective of them here. Like I couldn't even, you know, fit all of them here. It's so many names and people in this movie. And I just thought it was just so cool for them to all just come together and believe in this project for what it was. And I love me some some Kim Whitley, like he OD. <laughs> <laughs> just people 
people like these these like you know these great unsung black actors who you wish got a little bit more shine and didn't like tommy davidson makes this movie like so much i love what so many people here do with such small roles like kim kim whitley like even with it being small you still remember bo kim like who the hell are you supposed to be nigga you know that's black down my shut up nigga i ain't ask you like i <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, just what uh Tommy was able to do with such small screen time. He's so memorable, even though you, you know, you barely like low key see him in the film. Like not 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 as much as uh our our two leads. But it's it's just so funny. Like, it's just like, damn, it's so much talent here in this film that if we stop putting people in such stereotypical roles or just not giving them roles at all, we could see the range of what they could do, but we have to create our, our own little uh, scenarios just to see black people be funny and have a good time. <laughs> yeah, of course. And, and it just, you just know, like, um, even after this movie, when they made the cartoon, mm -hmm. you could just can tell like they like a family now and stuff mm -hmm. like that and just really close knit and I really enjoyed it because it was just really giving you like education. Mm -hmm. It gave you sex, gave you <laughs> violence, of course, but hey, it was yeah. just a lot, but it was just a whole lot the of sex um, scene that transitions into the uh astrology animation, everything. I love it. We need to do that. Put put more sex scenes transition into little astrology symbols and two animated afros humping. We need more of that on film. Oh, absolutely. And the colors was beautiful. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I love them colors. <laughs> hey, the dude from Reno 911 with the big eyes with Black Dynamite, I sell drugs to the community. Like, yeah. <laughs> Talk with Like, it's, 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 it's really, uh, really great. It's really great that they yeah. bring everybody here. Oh, we got a super chat. Thank you so much for that $2 super chat. TG, you know, I appreciate you. I like JVD and RVD, Tara, RVD420. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, TG. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the cartoon was hilarious. Absolutely. This was the perfect situation to try to translate into animation because there was so much material to work with. Everybody here is already goddamn out animated in the, in the actual movie. <laughs> yes. Yes. Tommy Davidson deserves his flowers. His career needs more love. I try to give him as much love as I can every single time I do a review with him in it because... I just love the way he acts with his whole body. Like it was, he did not have to go on 10 for this character, but you know, we gonna get two hot dogs spit down the middle. Like we gotta act with, with everything. And that's that's just, you know, something that he does. Just, just really, really talented. He knows when to, when to turn it up and cut it down. And then you have the likes of, um, Brian Mines down here giving us his best Dolomite. Like, yeah, hey, they're like, oh, well, huh, can I do anything else for you? Oh, uh, yes, I would like some of that ass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I would like some of that ass. Like, yeah. Like she put her ankles in it. Like that, that that's 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 talent right there. It takes a lot to do that. Then of course you have the like of, you know, Sally. I was just thinking about Sally Richardson when I was discussing the Lakers Dynasty, the amazing job she did directing a lot of the episodes there. Like there is so much talent here that is just absolutely underutilized and undiscovered. Like, you know, we do what we can. We need to create more more of our own projects. Let's see. Cream corn. Cream corn. No. <laughs> hey, we, hey, we forgot to discuss the scene. Oh, I don't know if you uh, noticed, but remember when he was like, I'm like, I'm 16 year old Black Dynamite. You 14 yes. year old Jimmy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's man, very uh, extra. <laughs> Very easy to uh, write the script here with them just fading the obvious of what's going on in the scene. Oh, Jimmy, you my little brother, and you on drugs. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of the script here is just stating the the obvious and them just really going over the top. It's it's so much here. If you have not seen this movie, please watch it. Like, don't don't sleep on Black Dynamite, especially if no. you are if you're a fan of black black exploitation. But yeah, oh, I'm I'm 16 year I'm 18 year old Black Dynamite. And this is my <laughs> old brother Jimmy, Jimmy, and, and you're on drugs like the the shaking and <laughs> like oh not the orphans. I used to be an orphan. Like it's, it's very very reflectionary. <laughs> Let's see, right. hit Nicole Sullivan. <laughs> like, no, nah, you know, I'm sorry. Let me help you up. You just shot a play. You know, I shouldn't have knocked your ass out like that. Let, let, let me help you up. <laughs> oh, man. But, like, it's it's just... 
I, I'm, I'm hoping that we get to a place where, and I think I think we're doing well with more uh, black writers and people coming into the forefront. But even if they if they could do this in 2009, I feel like there's even more opportunity to create your own thing. People are just kind of like so focused on the successful part. They're kind of scared to take chances with the type of movies or whatever they want to put out. But I think a lot of black creatives, especially like just actors, like the way that they came together here, it would be really great if they came together like on something recent and I'm not talking about no damn coming to America type shit like no come together <laughs> and make something uh, brand new of quality and I just feel like it will be hella successful we just need a little bit more range I can't remember the last time I saw a good movie with a black ensemble cast can you can you name a movie in the past two years that you've seen with a whole black ensemble cast no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> like that, that's sad. Like that's like yeah. really, really, really sad. And I, I think that needs to change. Like I was about to say, um, well, you know, uh, that uh, the best man situation. I was like, well, no, that was a sh TV show on Paramount. That still wasn't an actual movie. I can't think of one goddamn movie. Let's see. Uh, I recall the Marvel character on cable TV, Luke Cage. Man, he would have been good as Luke Cage. All of that. Let's see. That show was good. Critics liked it. Uh, it had an audience. Only lasted one year. I would like to know why. Yeah, I don't know why they ain't hit up. They ain't hit up Michael to be no Marvel character or nothing. Like why? <laughs> why Black yeah. Dynamite? Why? Don't want to be wow. Why Black Dynamite? <laughs> why? <laughs> why y'all ain't call this man? Let's see. I'm sure Tubi has something. Now look at here, pretty girl. <laughs> oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> oh man, not Tubi, not not Tubi. Yeah, Tubi, Tubi, Tubi has its uh its outlets and its ways of helping people be creative, but. <clears throat> The, the output isn't always of quality. I'll say that. But it, it, it's, some, it's some stuff there. <laughs> it's some stuff there. Let's see. Uh, they should have a movie with Undercover Brother and Austin Powers. Oh, child, they ain't doing that. No. <laughs> they ain't doing no. that. Mm -mm. Oh, man. But leaving this wonderful, supportive, supportive cast. And thank you, Black Dynamite. I, I, I'm so happy. Uh, the animated series. I would love for you guys to comment what was so great about the animated series because I've never seen it. <laughs> what? I, I've never seen it. I have never. Oh, wow. Seen it. I have never it's seen on, it. It's on Max. <laughs> Is it? Yes, it's on I Max. Both seasons. I'll check it out. I um, I like I've seen you know scenes from it and got the just like oh this this is funny as hell, and I, I saw what I felt like they did with the um with the material that they had from the movie and of course we can expound on it because it's animation but physically sitting down watching it or being uh, a part of it when it was coming on Adult Swim, I have never actually seen it so. <laughs> But you guys have been kind of low key raving about it since we started, so I think I'm, I think I'm gonna check it out. You know, you get get up in age. You don't really, you know. I can't remember the last time I watched an episode of the Boondocks. <laughs> oh man, you gonna crack up, and I'm gonna tell you um, <laughs> my favorite episodes: um, Richard Pryor, the Michael Jackson one. Um, they they got this thing called Black Jaws. It's so funny. Like you would be <laughs> cracking up. Like it's so hilarious but i still watch it to this day really yeah it's like that funny know. it said it only got two seasons so it's more than enough for me to uh go and check it out and run through it i'm gonna definitely look at it let's see uh makes me want to drink some anaconda malt liquor <laughs> <laughs> damn Thank it you go. <laughs> <laughs> don't you make me sing your ass down in the crenshaw please with his hot ass coating. Would you like that, huh? Huh, bitch? Would you like that? <laughs> Damn it, Euphoria. I know that's you. I ain't even got a book. Because <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm going to shake the, <laughs> shake the roots. They rake up the fruits. Like, that, that is my. 
That's one of my favorite moments. Hello, Black Media Man Cave. You guys go check out Black Media Man Cave if you haven't. He does throwbacks as well. And he's just as good, if not better than me. That's how good the content is on him, you know, with the black people. Go and check him out. Please, please, please get over there. Good, good, good content. I need to go in and fill up and see what he's put out most recently. But yeah, don't make me break out them hot ass coat hangers, bitch. Like, I ain't, I ain't got time. Keep on playing. Ain't nobody ask you to talk. I'm trying to get some ass. You trying to interrupt me. I see your ass back on the street. <laughs> just completely dismissive I, I i love it like is, is, that, in, is that in the cartoon i, I watch it it's yeah like, <laughs> yes it in the a, a whole lot a whole lot of it is really? in the cartoon <laughs> yes you've been missing out i'm gonna check it out i'm gonna check it out that's just something that i just didn't uh you know just kind of forgot about and didn't wind up going back to and there was also a spiritual sequel which i thought like kind of put the nail in the coffin as far as us getting a part two to black dynamite outlaw johnny black that actually came out recently this year has anybody seen this movie and what did you guys think about it have you seen this not yet i have i i, I don't know if i saw a trailer to it, like on TV it or anything. Fair. It wasn't. It was. It, it, it got the black dynamite treatment. <laughs> <laughs> the black dynamite curse. <laughs> yeah, it got the uh, the black dynamite treatment. There wasn't a whole lot of advertisement for it. I only knew about it because I kind of uh, try to stay on top of you know the new things coming out, especially if it's black people. And Michael J. White, he stars in this one. He directs it and he wrote it. So it's it's a triple act type situation. And so, uh, has anybody seen this? Like, I ain't seen nobody say, yeah, I saw it. Like, y'all ain't see this? <laughs> if you didn't no, know I anything haven't. about it, it's out. It, it's out. And uh, it's, once again, a parody. But he's very clear that he wasn't trying to live up to, you know, the, the infamous Black Dynamite situation. And because a lot of people saw it and they compared it to Black Dynamite. Like, oh, it's not as funny. It, it's, it's so different. Like, yeah, it's supposed to be different. It's not supposed to be Black Dynamite Part 2. It's a play on those old old school um Richard Roundtree um like what's what's the guy who plays Black Caesar Oh Fred Williamson Yeah it's supposed to be I forgot the western that he's in but it's kind of a play on the the Fred Williamson western so please check it out if you guys have not seen it but yeah there is a spiritual sequel <laughs> <laughs> but getting into the whole ending here just with i guess the the whole situation of leaving this do we still need a black dynamite part two i think we do <laughs> yeah yeah i, I, I wouldn't mind do. it yeah i wouldn't mind it I hate the fact that it wasn't successful and that kind of dictated like, well, y'all, you know, we tried and we put a lot of effort into this as, you know, me and my YouTube videos, we put a lot of effort into this and ain't nobody pull up to the function. Like we, we ain't doing it no more. <laughs> We're not doing it anymore. So he, um, it, he, he didn't, but I feel like with them kind of like, oh, it's a spiritual sequel. I'm like, damn. So that mean we never get in the black dynamite part two. I think it's definitely a character that deserved a few installments and not even mm -hmm. just, uh, in a parody sense. Like I would watch black dynamite if it was just its own thing and it wasn't parody, parodying anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that along with, um, what the, hell, what the hell he says? Like, ha, ah, yeah, that's a boomerang. I threw that shit before I entered the room. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's funny because, like, in a cartoon, um, I ain't going to tell you everything, but it's it's an like O.J. Simpson episode that you need oh, to gosh. watch. You, wow. That would have you in tears, I swear to God. I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out now and I, I might talk about it depending on how good it is. Like I have a lot of anticipation for it. I didn't know that it was, you know, such a thing. That's just, I don't know. That's just one. I think by that time, you know, you're 19, you're working. I was, you know, trying to pop my collar. I wasn't watching Adult Swim anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there is definitely a lot of material uh, for an animation to work here. So that's great. And I would live for a Black Dynamite part two. Anytime I get to uh, watch Michael J. White explore all of his his martial art techniques and just how good he is and how capable he is to probably carry a whole damn franchise but they never gave him a chance i'm here for it so michael if you're listening and you want to create another one i think we will watch it and support it because y'all ain't know nothing about outlaw black black outlaw johnny where, 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 where y'all was hiding at y'all <laughs> 
<laughs> Nobody saw the, the, the outlaw Johnny Black. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go check it out and and let you guys know how it is, and maybe even talk about it if it's good. But anything else you want to share on Black Dynamite and just your thoughts on the film at all? Well, I just enjoyed it. It's funny. It's original. As far as like just another character mm-hmm. that we can be proud of, and and just just the love. Like you could just tell. Like again like the whole crew and the cast was like a family unit like they showed mm-hmm. up and really gave us just their best like i don't think it's a dog character in this entire movie so no just shout out to him because <laughs> oh. <laughs> i'm running things um same here like i'm just hoping that in the future we get back to having uh a lot of us on screen at the same time in the same damn movie i miss that i miss black ensemble cast we used to have them a whole lot in the 80s 90s especially early 2000s and we kind of stopped doing that because we i feel like we don't get as many movies as we used to <laughs> They're no, there, just remakes. But, yeah, yo, <laughs> uh, just remakes and Marvel. So yeah, whenever uh there comes a time where these type of movies are back in the forefront and everybody's still trying to you know kind of be creative and you know even with this we didn't re reinvent the wheel. This is a whole parody of an era that is well known, but they made it their own. Like there's only so many times we can remake something. Don't touch House Party no more. Like give us some new new stuff and. I, th- I think that that will work best. <laughs> but Will, yes. you, have, you have been like absolutely awesome. I am going to give you the screen for a second so you can tell everybody where to find you, what you do, and why they should come and support you. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Hey, everyone. Um, you can find me on Facebook, William Brown. You can find me on Instagram, Real Dollar Will. You can find me on my YouTube channel, the 1804 Show Chapter 2. And what I do is I just enjoy helping people. And I have interviewed over 200 people. So sorry, I'm gonna have to give y'all a whole lot to digest and everything. But I just wanted to thank Tyra for bringing me on here. And I really appreciate being on here. And like I said, if you're interested, my channel's right there. and Hopefully, I will enjoy our new bonds and friendships. Thank you. You see, you see how welcoming that, that was. He ain't say get your ass over there and subscribe. You know, that's, what I, that's what I be saying. That's what I be saying. He said bonds and friendships. Like it was all warm. <laughs> Man, I can't. Oh my gosh! I was, I be trying to be professional. It was, you was so it silly. Was. It was so warm and inviting and all that good stuff. But as you guys can see, I have left a link to his channel in the chat. So if you guys want to get over there and go check him out and support, you know, go support what he's doing. Like we don't have enough people on any type of platforms, especially black people who are discussing mental health and depression and dealing with certain things that a lot of us need help with. But, you know, we don't often admit it. And also, you know, not just that, but interviewing and talking to people just about a plethora of other things. Like there's a whole variety of things that Will, Dollar Bill, Dollar Bill does over there on his podcast. So go and check him out and support him. But you guys have been absolutely awesome. As far as I am concerned, um, look out for rap shit. I don't know who's checking for rap shit, but it really don't matter because I'm going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> rap shit is coming out uh, this week in a couple of days, I believe. So I will be talking about that, probably doing a video and going live for that one as well. And uh, Saturday, I should be dropping my video. I was going to say Vampire in Brooklyn. We already did that one. <laughs> I should be dropping my video for interview with the vampires. So be on the lookout for that. I really need you guys to really, not you guys, because y'all here doing what y'all need to do. I'm talking about you niggas who ain't here. I really need you guys <laughs> <laughs> to start engaging a little bit more with, you know, when we don't so much talk about the movies with our favorite Black actors, when we get into things like uh, interview view with the vampire or serial mom i need you guys to check in with me because i love those movies and talking about them just as much as i do a black dynamite so if you guys could support them just as much as you support my other stuff that would just be absolutely awesome i give just as much you know energy for those as i give to something like this where i'm having a whole kiki because we got to get creepy and real uh pasty to talk about interview with a vampire but 
<laughs> this has been great. Like not not rap sheet, not rap sheet, rap shit. <laughs> <laughs> rap shit. You guys know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Tyra really be for the people, putting everybody on. That's why I always stick beside you, sis. Right, Danny? I'll be trying out here in these streets. You know, you it's okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We, we, we're going we're, we're gonna to keep doing it because this was great. And I love everything that Will had to say. And you guys just engaging in all of this dynamite activity. But I would definitely see you guys Saturday. We will not be going live. Nobody wanted to hop on the live for an interview with the vampire, huh? Y'all ain't trying to get this Tom Cruise energy. It's all right. It's all right. I'll be sick to that Brad Pitt by myself. It's okay. <laughs> well, I thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And all that other good stuff be sure to exit out of that chat you know when the live is over drop down below because y'all leave that little low area where i need y'all to come in y'all leave it real dry get down there and you know talk about what you loved about this live even about you know my video or even just you know talk about what you maybe went over there and heard on will's podcast and how good it was because i know you're going over there right but <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching i will definitely see you guys saturday good night you guys Good night. <laughs>